Hi, my name is Mr. Crone, and this is part of my conceptual physics series. This is actually the first video of my, of my conceptual physics series, and I chose the topic of speed because I feel like it's a topic that is relatively simple. Most people have kind of an intuitive understanding of what it means, but I don't think most people really understand why does speed work the way that it does? Why is it such a useful tool for telling who's fastest and slowest? It's, it's actually a little bit deeper than you might think. Um, if you just superficially think about the numbers, whichever number is the biggest, that's the fastest. So there's a little bit more to it than that. So let's take a look at an example that I think will help to kind of illustrate why speed is such a useful thing. And then also what else can we do if we know the, the speed of an object? So for this first example, I just want you to think about who is the faster of, the, of these two people. So you have Jaime who runs 100 meters in 16 seconds and Carla runs a little bit shorter race. And she does it in seven seconds. And so if you think about who is faster, I think for most people, it's not super obvious who's the fastest. They're running similar speeds. They're not super far away from each other. But part of what's making it so difficult is that they are not running a fair race. And what I mean by that is that they are either not running the same distance or they're not running for the same amount of time. You know, normally in a race, we would often say that whoever ran the lowest time or the shortest time, they must have been the fastest. In this case, that would be Carla. But that's not really fair because she only ran for 50 meters. So then there's no way to really know for sure, just thinking about that way, as to who is the fastest. And so this is where we can fix this situation if, for example, we imagine what would happen if Carla, if she ran twice as far, well, then she would also have run 100 meters. Now, it's a little bit of a guess. I couldn't say for certain that Carla will only take another seven seconds to run that 50 meters. But it's, it seems like a fair assumption that it's likely to be close to that amount. So if we were to double her time also, then that would say that she would run 100 meters in only 14 seconds. And obviously that would mean she was faster than, than Jaime was. So we could say that Carla is the fastest. And the reason why we can say that now is because we made a fair comparison. So we have the same distance. In fact, we can make a general rule that if two objects travel the same distance, then the shortest time equals fastest object. Okay, and this is like super common because if you think about the Olympics, right, they run all kinds of races, people on bikes, people are running, people are swimming, all these skis, everything uh, on ice skates, people are, are skating. And how do they figure out who the winner is? The person with the smallest time. I mean, they don't even calculate the speed. They don't even look at what the speed is. They only decide who is the fastest by looking at the time and putting it on a big board and saying, whoever has the smallest number, they are the one who is the fastest. So this idea that the fastest person is based on time, that's that's very common. You definitely understand that because you've, you've lived that experience. Maybe not as obvious though, there's another way we could have made this fair. And that is that instead of having them run for the same distance, I could have had them run for the same amount of time. So just think about that for a second. Okay, so if we have two people run for the same amount of time, then what's going to determine who is the fastest will be who has run the farthest. So if I have two people stand next to me and I say, I'm gonna start a stopwatch, it's gonna run for 10 seconds. And when I say stop, then you're gonna stop. I say, ready, set, go. They run for 10 seconds. I hit the stopwatch and I say stop and they stop wherever they are. They freeze wherever they are. And whichever person is the furthest away from me at that moment, that would be the fastest person. So it's a slightly different criteria than when we were thinking about distance. So now we want the largest distance and that would equal the fastest person. Well, that is actually how speed works. Speed actually works by making a comparison of the distance to the time for the same amount of time. That's what makes it a fair comparison. And I'll show you the same example. We'll come back to the same example after we've talked a little bit about this concept of how is speed uh, created. So obviously one of the problems that we're running into is that the only way to know who's fastest is when you make a fair comparison. And that means either the same distance or for the same time. But obviously there must be a little bit easier way for us to be able to do this so that we can 
and not have to go through this this uh, kind of comparison where we have to somehow make it fair all the time. It would be nice if we could create a model that would just always make everything fair, and that's what speed does. Speed allows us to make this fair comparison because it changes everything to the same unit of uh, time. So the way we create this model for speed is we say we'll make the ratio of the distance to time. We'll compare how distance compares to time because realize we need both. I can't just say because two people ran a 100 meter dash, who's the fastest? Or if somebody ran farther, that that automatically means they're the fastest. Or if somebody ran for a shorter time that they were faster, that's only true if it's a fair race. And so this idea of using, of creating a ratio of the distance to the time creates this kind of permanent mathematical number or a model that will allow us to know who is the fastest all the time in a simple way. So the way this works is, I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit here. I'm gonna write it in word form first. The speed of an object is considered to be the ratio of the distance it traveled compared to the time to travel that distance. So therefore, it's going to have units like maybe miles per hour or kilometers per hour or feet per second or feet per minute or even smaller centimeters per second or centimeter per minute. So it's always going to have a unit of distance and a unit of time. But obviously, it's going to be very inconvenient for us to keep writing this out all the time, writing out the full words. So V equals D. divided by t. So I realize that there's a little bit of a disconnect because d for distance, that makes sense, t for time, but then v for speed. And part of the reason we use the letter v to represent speed is because v also can represent velocity. And velocity is our goal. Our goal is to understand velocity. Uh, so speed is like a sort of a stepping stone to a little bit more sort of sophisticated way of thinking about things. And so rather than have two different symbols for concepts that are very similar, different ways of measuring how fast something is, we want to use the same symbol all the time. So uh, we'll talk about how to show the symbol for velocity uh, to be a little bit different using the same letter V. But this equation is going to allow us to calculate this ratio of distance to time that's going to make it easy for us to have a fair comparison of who is the fastest. So let's do two quick examples just to show you how you would use this concept to uh, determine the speed of something and i at this point especially early in this conceptual physics series i really want to emphasize the way that i'm organizing the information and the way that i'm identifying what properties was i given and identifying which letter symbolizes them so that when i go to the math part it's going to make that math part much easier so let me slide this up so we can see both of the example problems uh, let's do the first one. So it says Kilo ran 220 meters in 52 seconds. Calculate Kilo's speed. So you'll notice that I don't see anything in there that said what the distance or said time. Like those words didn't come up in the problem. However, I do see that there is a distance. But the reason why I know that it's the distance is because it says that it is 220 uh, meters. So I know that meters is a unit of distance. So even though there's nothing else in there, I know that the D is 220, and I'll just use the symbol for meters, which is going to be the letter uh, M. Second thing it told me was that this she did this in 52 seconds, and I think most people will recognize that seconds is a unit of time. So even though it didn't say that 52 seconds was the time, it's pretty clear that it was the, the time. Okay, and what are they looking for? It says calculate Kila's speed. Again, we're going to use the letter V for speed. So once I identify what I'm looking for, I'm going to write the equation, V equals D over T, and then I'm going to set this uh, so that I can plug the numbers in. Now you have two choices which way you work. You can work left to right or top to bottom. That would be the natural for uh, English readers or speakers is left to right, top to bottom. I personally, when I have fractions, tend to move along this way. So I'll just put another uh, horizontal line here. And now I'll plug the numbers in. Be really careful. The part of the purpose why we wrote this list of given was so that we don't make a mistake and get these numbers flipped, and then we get no credit for this problem. So at this point, once I've identified what was given, and I've identified the correct equation for solving this problem, that's most of the work is done. You've done almost all the physics. Now it's just following through with the math. And in this case, if you were to plug this into your calculator, it comes out to be 4.32. Uh, and the units for this thing are going to be meters per second because those were the original units 
for those original properties. And I'll just put a box around it just to indicate that this is the end of the of that particular solution. Okay, so pretty straightforward. You just plug them in, go to the calculator, spit out the answer. So let's do one more real quick, and then we'll go to a little more uh, challenging problem. So Jahao takes 49 minutes to jog 8.6 kilometers or 5.4 miles. Really important to make a note right here. The reason why you'll see numbers sometimes in parentheses after I've already given you the number is because I'm giving you an alternate version of it. So, you know, in the United States, we're more accustomed to miles, but in other countries, in fact, almost every other country, they would be more familiar with kilometers. So just so that everybody has something that they can kind of connect with, that they will understand, or that it makes sense, they can visualize. That's why the numbers are oftentimes given in two measures, and then you choose whichever one is appropriate for your uh, situation. So our goal is to calculate to house speed. That means I must know what the distance and time are, the first thing that I know is I can see that this is the time right there, 49 minutes. And I know that, again, because of the units, and that's it. It does not say that it was the time. No other thing indicates that that's the time other than the fact that that has the correct units after it. Just so that I can keep that straight from miles and also from uh, meters, I'm going to say MIN for the units, and then for miles, I'll do MI. Okay, and you can see that it says 8.6 kilometers. I was not told what units to use, so I can use whichever ones that I want to. I'm gonna to choose to use the kilometers. And what I'm looking for is the speed. So again, same thing, V equals D divided by T. This needs to be in your solution. This needs to be shown explicitly because this is the physics. This is the part where you're saying, this is the model that I'm going to use that's gonna solve this problem. It's gonna answer the question that I want to know about this object. So at this case, we'll just plug in the numbers. One thing that I notice happens uh, quite a bit is that people automatically put the big number on top that they don't really think about like what's supposed to go where. And so they end up with the wrong answer because they just automatically put the big number on top. Just be careful. It, it, we made the list over here so that that way when we go over to plug these in, there's no chance we can make a mistake. It's, it's already been laid out for us. It's just for us to copy it over. But obviously we do have to be a little bit careful about uh, doing that. So in this case, this number is going to come out to be a pretty small number. It's 0 0.17. I think it comes like 55 and it continues on. I'm going to say 0 0.176 kilometers per minute. Okay, so that's how you calculate speed. And the reason why this allows us to be able to make comparisons is, for example, if we look at this first one up here for Kila, 4.32 meters per second, but what that actually means is 4.32 meters in every one second. This for Jahao is 0 0.176 kilometers in every one minute. So if you gave me somebody else's speed and it was also in kilometers per minute, well, we would be making a fair comparison because it would be one minute. Or if we made our comparison in seconds, they would be compared for one second. So then it essentially comes down to this distance portion. So what this 4.32 meters per second says is that I can travel a distance of 4.32 meters in every one second that I travel, or that's what would be my expectation. But this formula is actually more powerful than this because besides just being able to calculate the speed, we can also look for uh, distances and times. So let's take a quick look at uh, that. Before we do that, let's take a, I have a little bit of a trick for you that will help kind of reduce the math just a little bit so that it's a slightly easier to come up with the, the formula, the correct equation. Um, we learned this, that D is equal to D divided by T. And the thing about it is we can do algebra to solve this equation for D. So for example, if I wanted to find out what the distance somebody traveled was, I could, I could find an equation for that, or I can solve for T, but let me show you an easier way to do it. So this triangle, is sort of a trick to get around doing the algebra here at the beginning of the course. So I'm gonna keep things simple. I wanna kind of cut down as much of the math as possible in the beginning, just kind of ease into things, make sure that everyone has a good conceptual understanding of it before we start going a little deeper with the, with the math. Um, so in this triangle, the only thing that really needs to be memorized is that the D goes on the top. The V and the T, they can go either way because this symbol where the line is between them, that means that it's multiplication. So when you see two things next to each other, just like when we do conversions, those two things next to each other means that we're going to be doing multiplication. And when we see things above each other, that means we're gonna be doing um, division. So this triangle 
is going to allow us to figure out all of the three possible variations of this equation, one solved for V, one solved for D, and one solved for T. One we obviously already know, and that is V equals D over T, and that will kind of help you to see how the, the triangle works, because you can see that if you covered up the thing you were looking for, if I covered up the letter V, then it would actually show me that the equation was D divided by T. So covering up the letter V, it's D over T, and that's where I come up with this equation, V equals D uh, divided by T. But what if I wanted to know what the distance was? Well, then I would cover up the D, and that says that D is equal to V times T. So this little trick allows us to, it just basically does the algebra for us. So all we have to do is just write out what is the final result of this algebra. So we've solved for V, we solved for D. Last thing to do is to solve for T. I'll cover up T. When I cover up T, it says that the equation is T is equal to D divided by V. And those are the three versions of the equation. Now we've already done two samples of V equals D over T. So let's take a look at the other two, the D and the T versions of the equation and see how they look and what's different about them. So I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit so we can see the first example problem. And the first problem says the balloon is driving at 70 miles per hour. And one thing that I would point out is we have not seen that yet as a something that was given to us. We were always given distances and times in the previous examples, but now we have a, uh, this is the speed, right? And how do you know that it's the speed? Because it doesn't say that Belen's speed is 70 miles per hour. It just says she's driving at 70 miles per hour because that's how people talk. So I just can't stress enough, it's the units. The units on the number miles per hour has both a distance and a time. Only speed has that. Distances is just one unit, like miles or kilometers. And time is one unit, like hours or minutes. So when you see that mixed or that combination, that's got to be your units of uh, speed. So in this case, V is equal to 70 miles per hour. And this says to calculate how far she will drive in 3.5 hours. I think that's pretty clear. 3.5 hours is the time. And what we are looking for is D, the distance that she traveled. So again, the power of that triangle is that I don't need to do the algebra. So I don't need to write this equation and then go through and solve it for D. This will allow me to find it, again, by just simply covering up the letter that I'm looking for. I cover up the letter D and it tells me that D is equal to V times T. And this equation must be written in your solution. You have to show what area of physics, what are, what are you using? There are other equations that have V, other equations that have T, other equations have D. You need to show which equation are you using, which model are you using to solve this problem. Uh, in general, when I don't have a fraction, I tend to work more vertically. But again, that's personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to that, as long as it is going left to right and also top to bottom, because that's the, that's the way that we read. So in this case, I would ask you to be careful to make sure that after you write the equation, it doesn't really matter what order you put these numbers in, because of course the multiplication is not going to change because of the order. But I would just argue that you do wanna make sure you match things up correctly because when somebody is scoring your work and they see that you have these reversed, it does make you wonder, how do you, why are you putting it in that order? You said you were gonna put V times T, then you put it in a reverse order. So just be a little bit careful about that. Uh, to make sure that you don't lose uh, part of the credit for the problem. So in this case, all we would do is take 70 times 3.5, and that is about 245. In this case, that would be miles. The miles uh, per hour, the hours portion of these is going to cancel, and we'll be left with miles. So this is a really important aspect of understanding speed. When you calculate a distance or you calculate a time, your unit for the answer is going to come from the speed. So in this case, we were looking for a distance. The distance part of the speed was in miles. So therefore my answer came out of miles. And it was really important to make sure that these units matched each other. The hours and the hours here will cancel when the math is done. And therefore you will end up with uh, miles. If you just look at what happened, we multiplied those two numbers together. So I multiplied miles over hours, which was the unit for the speed. And I uh, multiplied that by time which was in hours, these guys will cancel and I end up with miles for my answer. Okay, so as long as the time units match correctly, then they'll disappear 
and then you end up with whatever the units were for the distance in the speed. All right, I'll put a box around this final answer. Let's take a look at one last example. We looked at how to calculate speeds. We looked at how to calculate distances. Now let's look at how would you calculate the, the time. So in this example, uh, we're going to have Samantha take a walk to the store and we have her speed because it says she can walk at 75 meters per minute. Again, it does not say that that's her speed, but that is the correct units for speed because it has that mixed units of distance and time. So this is V is equal to 75 meters per minute. And the store is 925 meters away. So it doesn't say that that's the distance, but it does have the correct units for a distance. It has to be the, the distance. There's no other possibility for that. And what we are looking for is T. Always make sure to write down what you're looking for, not just the things that you are given. So somebody, you have a clear picture in your mind, what is exactly what we're looking for? And this is the goal. So this is really important to explicitly write down what is it that we're looking for. So just to remind you, when you go back to that triangle, you cover up the letter that you're looking for, and it tells you that the formula is D divided by V. For me personally, when I'm working with fractions, I tend to start doing my out the, the math to the right. It just feels a little bit easier to show things matching up correctly. So in this case, the bigger number is on the top, 925 divided by 75. That is equal to 12.3. And so I'm going to take a look at the units for this, but it is going to come out in units of minutes because that was the time unit in the speed. Now, if you think about the way that the, the units worked out, it's a little bit tricky to see. I don't think it's obvious to everybody how the meters cancel out. So let's just take a quick look at that. We took the distance, which was in meters, and we divided it by the speed, which was in meters per minute. So the way that you divide by a fraction is you flip it over or you invert it and then you multiply it. So this is going to give us meters, because I have meters on the top, that's going to stay there. And then it's going to be times minutes over meters. And these guys will now cancel and we end up with minutes for our answer. So the important thing you need to know, you won't have be asked to do this on a problem. You don't need to show me this on a problem, but you do need to recognize what is the correct unit for the answer. That unit is coming from the speed. The speed is units of distance and time. When you make a calculation with this, one of them is going to go away and the other one's going to uh, remain. So that's the basics of how to use speed. Speed is the ratio of the distance to time. It allows us to make a fair comparison when we're trying to figure out who's the fastest, but even more powerful than that, it can allow us to also figure out things like how long will this trip take or how far could we travel if we were going at a certain speed. It's a really powerful concept, even though it's very simple um, and obviously something that we use almost every day of our lives.